In this video, I will show you the process I used to modify my iPod Nano 3rd generation. It'll be difficult, maybe even impossible, but let's get started. I started the process by readying my Dremel tool for polishing. This is the time when I can finally remove the Apple logo from the back of this device. I plan to polish this to a near mirror finish. I am going for an iPhone-like look with a shiny black body and a shiny metallic logo in the center. After nearly an hour of polishing, I am pretty well pleased with the results. Although it is a little bit hazy, I think it looks really nice. So now that the back is all ready, I can start the dismantlement of the iPod. As you may imagine, this was the most difficult step in the whole process, taking nearly half an hour. I used a prying tool I had to remove the back, and after some persuasion, I got the back off. This is important as I plan to replace the battery and also get the front panel by itself. So now that it is open, I can warm up my soldering iron for some battery replacement. After removing the screws from the main board, I have access to the solder joints that connect this battery to the iPod. The unsoldering of the old battery was easy, and the new battery went in without a hitch. I connected everything back together to test out the new battery, and after some charging, the device was back to working condition. Next, I started work on removing everything from the front aluminum case. The screen and main board came off easily, but the button assembly was another story. The black steel plate holding the buttons in is glued to the case. I found that the best way of removing this plate was to slide an X-Acto knife underneath it and slowly prying up on the plate. This ended up working, and I could remove the rest of the buttons and ready the front for painting. I stenciled the front panel and the center button to cover up seams, and I got the spray paint ready. I chose a nice black color to replace the sky blue anodization of the front panel. After two coats of paint, I could remove the stencils, and set the iPod under a lamp to dry quickly. After it dried, I was very pleased with the finish. Next, I was ready to prepare the back plate for painting. Surprisingly, the back of this isn't aluminum, but a high chromium stainless steel. One preparation I made while the back plate was off was to remove the dent from the back. I rolled out the dent with the back of a butter knife, and this method proved very effective, and the dent was pretty much removed. After painting and stenciling in the same way I did before, I was ready for the most exciting part of the project, laser engraving. I chose a new logo, one that I liked, and one that I found had a little bit of meaning behind it. I chose the logo from techsyndicate.com as it seemed like it worked perfectly. Next I put the picture into a program in a computer and after calibrating the laser engraver I was ready to start engraving. After about 5 minutes of engraving, the back looked done. The logo may be a bit more dull than before, but it looks really nice. To seal the paint in and keep it from chipping off, I applied a lacquer and after it dried, I found that the lacquer made the bare metal much more shiny and have a much more appealing finish. Overall assembly of the front panel assembly was surprisingly easy. It just went on in layers, and after the screws were in place, I was ready to test out the iPod to see if it still works. So the final screw has been placed in the device, and I think that we're ready to boot up. And it works. Now all I need to do is snap the front panel into the back panel. This sounds easy, but it, this actually proved to be quite difficult. Many of the tabs on the back panel were ever so slightly bent in the wrong way, which prevented them from latching into the front panel. One of the tabs was unrepairable, so I had to finish off the assembly by gluing the last area of the case. It looked a little bit unfinished, but it sure looks better than when we started. Now I can use this iPod with my homemade stereo system and can test out everything. This transformation is probably the most drastic change I've ever seen on an iPod. Now I can talk about the story of the back logo. If you were wondering, this is the logo from Tech Syndicate, which I found through their YouTube channel called Raise the World, and I would highly recommend subscribing to their YouTube channel, and also hopping onto their forums at techsyndicate.com. And if you guys out there at Tech Syndicate are seeing this, you guys rock. So anyway, this has been me, LaserLord10, and I say farewell after this extraordinarily new transformation of an old favorite, and I will see you all later.